Live from the Cardinal Television Studios, I'm James Bailey and this is your Fisher News Brief. The 2020 presidential campaign has officially begun. No, seriously. President Donald Trump held a campaign rally in Melbourne, Florida on Saturday in front of an estimated 9,000 people. The event was seen as a bit of relief for President Trump after a tough first month in office. The president spent the rally talking about familiar topics such as immigration while also discussing his performance during his first month on the job. The White House is running so smoothly, so smoothly. And believe me, I and we inherited one big mess. That I can tell you. But I know that you want safe neighborhoods where the streets belong to families and communities, not gang members and drug dealers who are right now, as I speak, being thrown out of the country and they will not be let back in. We will have strong borders again. Residents in New Jersey were shocked when an airplane crashed into a residential street. It had happened in Bayonne, a suburban city near New York. The single-engine Piper PA-28 airplane hit a car when it came down, and it broke into pieces with sections of the wing hitting the ground inches away from pumps at a gas station. Another piece of wreckage broke a glass door to the gas station's retail area. Nobody inside the gas station or car was injured. The pilot survived the crash and was taken to the hospital. The pilot radioed for help near the Statue of Liberty. It is not known why he crashed. He was the only person in the plane. At least 31 people were injured when an explosion took place in downtown Bogota, Colombia Sunday. According to a tweet from the Bogota mayor's official Twitter account, two of the 31 were seriously injured. The explosion took place in downtown Bogota in the La Macarena neighborhood near a bullfight ring. At least 10 police officers and a civilian were injured in the incident, according to Bogota's police press office. The police added that 12 individuals are under police custody and are considered suspects. Colombia's president, Juan Manuel Santos, tweeted Sunday, All of my solidarity to the police injured in the La Macarena incident. We stand with their families. Our prayers are with them. In a separate tweet, Santos added, We condemn the attack against the police who are providing security in the La Macarena incident. Investigations will continue to capture those responsible. New research finds a quarter of teens who vape say they've used e-cigarettes in an alternative form known as dripping. That number is more alarming when you take into account a December report from the Surgeon's General Office which says that e-cigs are the most commonly used form of tobacco among young people in the United States. Dripping exposes these young vapors to a whole new set of risks. Kim Hutchinson explains in today's Health Minute. The normal process of vaping relies on an e-cigarette's reservoir and wick to feed liquid to a heating coil within the device. The liquid turns into a vapor, which is then inhaled. Dripping is when a user bypasses the usual battery-operated process and manually drips the liquid directly onto the coil. According to a study in the journal Pediatrics, dripping creates thicker clouds of vapor, gives a stronger sensation in the throat, and makes flavors taste better. Unfortunately, dripping also increases the release of harmful chemicals. The toxins are linked to cancer and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, a progressive illness that makes it difficult to breathe. Handling the liquid so often also means there's a greater risk of skin contact. If enough liquid is spilled, a vapor could be exposed to toxic levels of nicotine. Even before dripping became an issue, other health concerns led the FDA to announce it would regulate e-cigarettes the same way it regulates other tobacco products. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. A pair of new movies try to take on the Lego Batman movie at the box office this weekend. Were they able to outbuild the bat? Rick Damagella has the countdown. Parking lot. After school. It's on. The R-rated comedy Fist Fight only had enough punch to debut in fifth place with $12 million. John Wick Chapter 2 slipped one spot to fourth with a $16.5 million weekend. The Great Wall had a less than great domestic debut, opening in third to $18 million in ticket sales. The movie has already performed well at the international box office, where it has made over $244 million to date. Fifty Shades Darker held on to second place in its second week in theaters with $21 million. You can't spend the rest of your life alone, dressed in black, listening to angry music and staying up all night. Yes, I can, because I'm Batman. The Lego Batman movie built upon its success and topped the charts again with $34.2 million. That brings its domestic total to $107.5 million in just two weeks in theaters. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 
That's all today's headlines. I'm James Bailey for Fisher News Brief.